Good afternoon. My name is Mark Atwood, and I'm the Director of Open Source Engagement at Hewlett Packard Enterprise Networking. And I'm here to talk about OpenSwitch, with an introduction and an update, and then to introduce um, our partners on the project. Our agenda is I'm going to go quick, oh, quickly over an introduction of OpenSwitch and the um, update on our um, current release and release plans. And then we'll have a presentation, a short presentation from each one of the other contributors besides HPE. And then when we're done with that, we'll do a community update on the actual community engagement process for OpenSwitch. First, what OpenSwitch is. We are building a complete open source network operating system. By complete, that means from the drivers all the way up to the APIs. And we are trying to establish an ecosystem where it's not just one company or just two companies making contributions. We want OpenSwitch to be the place where technology and the place where um, top of rack networking happens and evolves in the future. We're focusing right now on enterprise and on um, campus networking. It provides layer two and layer three protocols, both for um, management and for control. And we have designed it about around reliability and modularity and extensibility to make it easy for both HPE and for all of the other partners to contribute to it and then for the users to use it. The next release branch is called DIL. And what we're focusing on for the DIL branch is a minimal set of features that are viable um, for the simplest top of rack deployments. Each future release will have more and more features and more and more power, but we're trying to get something that actually works out right now. We have some hardware targets that we're focused on. We picked just a few to keep <coughs> us focused on our work here. Um, while that hardening and while that release work is happening, an additional development will continue on the master branch. We're going, right now we're focusing on a 13-week um, 13 13 week, um, branch release, harden release cycle. That may slow down or speed up depending on our experience with the cycle right now. I have a whole list here of features that are going into the deal release branch. It will be hardened and a list of experiments. You'll be able to get them in detail um, if you ask us for a PDF of the slides later, I'm not going to read them all here for you right now. But it's the basic stuff for, ma for manageability, for um, debuggability, for doing all sorts of standard control protocols and routing protocols and switching protocols that you're used to. I'm going to change hats a little bit right now. And I'm, um, this slide was sent to us by um, Ansible. It's, um, Ansible was one of our um, first community other open source projects that worked closely with us. Um, we worked with Ansible to design our <coughs> APIs and our control interfaces so that they were easily automatable by Ansible and by all the latest cutting edge management and control frameworks. Um, it's, our relationship with them worked very, very well. Ansible has been open source from the beginning, as has OpenSwitch. And now that Ansible is part of Red Hat, their focus did not change there. And that relationship has continued to, um, to work very well. Ansible helped us write the APIs. Ansible has written playbooks and control scripts that focus on all of OpenSwitch's strengths. And their next rev, they're going to come out with playbooks that focus on very common topologies and very common configuration abstractions. The idea is to make OpenSwitch be the best kind of NOS that Ansible can drive and for Ansible to be the best control framework to drive OpenSwitch. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we've been talking about OpenSwitch as an open source project and we're doing all the open source things already. We have the issue tracker, is public Git repositories, um, public continuous integration testing, public mailing lists, public group chat. Um, you raise the issue of a, um, of a roadmap. Our roadmap right now is kind of a meta roadmap as we've, um, we've roadmap putting together the structure for a community coming together and talking about what they need next. If someone needs a new protocol or if someone needs an old protocol, um, the correct solution is to show up, talk in the community, talk to um, uh, Michael, who's the um, architect of um, all of this, and then design and implement and merge in the protocols that you need using all of the standard open source tools that we use here. Um, 
as an open source project, it uses a, um, we made it as lightweight as possible for as much as it does. So it uses the Apache 2, um, is a permissive open source license. We use the simplest possible Apache cor um, corporate contributor li um, agreement, the light as possible individual contributor um, developer certificate of origin, just so we can get as many companies, uh, even as many drive-by contributors as possible working. Um, the um, biggest point I've been working the most on is this third one here. We're becoming a Linux Foundation project. It's not going to be just wholly owned and dominated by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. The governance and um, communication and trademark and all that stuff will move over to the LF. And then HP will become a first of equals there. We again made it as um, unsurprising and as lightweight as possible. There will be a... Um, a um, board which does the budget and the marketing and the trademark policy and the IP policy and then a technical committee that makes the technical decisions and goes to implements the technical direction we want the project to go into.